Greetings, Sigma males. This is Alex from Sigma Spirit. And this is another episode of the longer audio series we're going to be doing for Sigma Spirit. And these audio series are meant to be more like long, deep, meditative journeys, storytelling, introspection, confessional, sharing my insights, my guidance. And also it's a little bit about me working through certain things. These are meditations for me. And in this episode, we're going to talk about character. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you exactly what kind of character I mean, because I know that that word has a lot of funny connotations. And I promise you, it's not going to be what you think it is. You might have something in your mind, but I'm pretty sure that's it's not what I'm talking about. So let me start off by telling you what you're watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, this morning, I couldn't go to sleep. So a long time ago, I decided that whenever I couldn't sleep, that I would just get up and I would do the work. Now, there are many reasons why I decided to do that a long time ago. One of the reasons why I decided to do that was because I knew that work would solve a lot of my problems. There are many problems in your life that might be solved by just getting the work done. But there was another reason why I decided to get up this morning. In fact, I didn't even need to get up because at four o'clock in the morning, I wasn't sleeping and I realized I wasn't going to be sleeping. So I decided to just get up and go shoot this video at sunset. And I'm glad I did. And the reason I did this was because on a deep level, character. And again, I don't mean the character you might be thinking of. And we're gonna get into what I mean by that. So typically when you hear someone talk about character, they're referring to someone's integrity, what someone does when, they're, when others are not watching, what someone's worth, what someone's made of, and as Sigma males, I think that we do strive to have a deep sense of character. I think we find it abhorrent when people don't behave with character. We can watch other people around us and sort of wonder why they don't behave in a way with any integrity whatsoever. And I think it's because of our introspective nature. Being so introspective and empathetic is really the opposite of being sociopathic. So that introversion will lead us towards self-judgment. And I think as bad as self-judgment is, it does build a certain character within us, a certain integrity on a deep personal level. But again, I want to talk about the other meaning of character. So what do I mean? I'm talking about creating a character. I'm talking about this persona, this legend that you are responsible for making. And when I woke up this morning, I decided I was going to be a certain character and I was going to live this character. So when I couldn't sleep last night, part of my character is just the person that gets up and does it. Now, I'm no David Goggins, I'm no Gary V, I'm no Jocko Willink, but I do have my own personal standard, and I do have a character I strive to be. So I think if you're watching these videos on my channel, listening to this audio series, you might have a missing piece within you. And that missing piece might be that you haven't decided what kind of character you're going to create. And that's okay. That's why we're here. You see, walking along the river on these early mornings 
has given me an, a very unique opportunity to just think about who I want to become. The last year has been really all about finding this persona that I want to be and dreaming, dreaming big and just understanding that there are no limits to reality of who you could become. You could be any, any person you want to be. You just have to decide to create that character. And I've had a lot of good inspiration that came. And when I think of character, I think of a person of legend. I want to want to mention a book called or a movie called Legends of the Fall. And I talked about this movie on another video in which I talk about Tristan Ludlow, the main character, and how he's a he's a real sigma male, but he's also a very unique character. And he's raised by this Native American man named One Stab. And I'll never forget my friend recommended this to me. A real role model of a friend. My friend Brian. Serious inspiration. Huge person of change in my life. And he told me to watch this movie. And in the movie, One Stab says... Some people hear their own inner voices with great clearness, and they live by what they hear. Such people become crazy, or they become legends. So when I think of that, I think of my own call. I think of the Sigma males around me. And I think of the calling that we're all, we're all receiving right now in life and our own inner voices and how hard it is to hear our own inner voices with clarity, with clearness. And most people are going crazy right now, but I think a few people will become legends. So in this, in this audio series, I want to talk about legendary characters, men who became legends. And when I talk about them, I want to talk about them as if they are people that we could become, not people we admire, but people we aspire to be like. So in Legends of the Fall, there's a lot more great nuggets of wisdom in this movie, and I highly recommend it. And I have another quote for you. But I want to warn you, if you've not seen the movie and you plan on watching it, this is a spoiler. Although it's not very much of a spoiler, but I will give you five seconds to turn this off or skip over this part before I give away what happens in the end. Although, you should know that life is finite. So this shouldn't come as a surprise that a man died. So again, we have this man of great spirit, this Sigma spirit, Tristan Ludlow, with the, with the enormous thumos, high spiritedness. And we have his Native American mentor who narrates the movie. And the last scene, one stab, the Native American, he's narrating over the scene, and he says, Tristan died in the moon of the popping trees. He was last seen in the North Country, hunting. His grave is unmarked, but it does not matter. He had always lived in the borderland anyway, somewhere between this world and the other. It was a good death. So, that quote really sticks out to me. And it stuck out to me for a long time. Because I've always felt like I lived on the borderland between this world and the next. And I think many Sigma males feel that way. Many men of Sigma, spirit, high thumos, natural living, that kind of energy. And I think it's easy to, to 
for us to look at our own mortality, our death, impending death. And we have a sigma male depth to us, a profundity, an intelligence, an intuitiveness. And we're able to look at death and life in a, what I would consider a much healthier way than most people. Throughout this movie, you see many examples of this character and how he embodies the sort of Sigma male, Sigma spirit character, even in love. So one of the big themes of this movie is this sort of twisted relationship he has with his brother's widow. And they have this relationship and she says, were you going to say goodbye? Tristan, how long will you be gone? And Tristan, who is preparing to leave somewhere to go off on a great expedition, some adventure, he goes, not long, a few months. And Susanna, the woman, seeing that he's in enormous pain over various reasons, she says, I can make it better for you. And he says, no. And she, she pleads and she says, just give me a chance. And he says, don't do that. And she goes, look at me, please look at me. I'll wait for you, however long it takes. I'll wait for you forever. And yet, Tristan goes his own way. He goes on the hero's journey. And he doesn't let love or a child or a woman or family hold him back because he's on a spirited journey. And I think it's interesting to look at that as a Sigma male and just see how often we're given those opportunities to do that, to leave, to go, to start new. And I've, I've closed so many chapters in my book and I've been Tristan in that situation. I've, I've left people behind and it's not good or bad. It's just who I am. It's neutral at this point. But if you don't understand it, then it can be very difficult to understand that that's just who you are. In another scene, we have a quote about his brother. Tristan was always the black sheep of the family. And I think many of you listening to this as Sigma males, you are probably the black sheep. I certainly am the black sheep of my family. And I surround myself with other black sheep. Some of the most interesting people I know are black sheeps. But Tristan's brother was not a black sheep. Tristan's brother, about following the rules. He says, I followed all of the rules, man's and God's, and you, you followed none of them. And they all loved you more, Samuel, father, and my, even my own wife. And again, this just calls so deeply to the Sigma renegade side, the rebellious nature of us. We don't follow rules. We break them. We make our own. And yet, what does this do? Oftentimes, it magnetizes people towards us. But this renegade status, this against the grain, outside the box, rebellious side. It can push us very far. It can push us beyond the normal social life. And sometimes we find ourselves in solitude. And I think some characters are defined in this solitude, this solitude, this work, and personally, I've had moments in my life where I've done very solitary jobs. And one of the most solitary, I think, upon analyzing this, is realizing that this path of me becoming a creative entrepreneur, sort of, I hate to call myself an influencer, a speaker, a revolutionary, whatever you want to call it, this is a long and solitary road. 
And for me, this is just like what I would call me being in my quarry. Now, what is the quarry? One of my favorite books is The Fountainhead. And in this book, you have Howard Rourke, a true Sigma male, truly an exemplary man, does things out of principle, does things for mastery, does things just to be excellent. And he rarely follows the crowd. He rarely requires validation, approval, and he really doesn't care about the opinion of other people. Now, politics aside, I love this book, and I think it's a powerful lesson in what, how, and why a man can live his life. So what can he do? How can he do it? And why does he do it the way he does? In this book, you have Howard Rourke, who, from the outside, it looks like that he is sabotaging his own career as an architect. He gets kicked out of architecture school. He doesn't take certain jobs. He snubs people. He's a bit of an elitist. But he's trying to do things his own way. And there's a moment where he gets basically run out of the city, kicked out of his job. The business fails. He's ridiculed by people in the press. And what does he do? He's, he's such a talented architect, but he decides to go work a very blue collar job a very manual labor kind of job in a quarry. And he stays in this quarry for months and he doesn't tell anyone that he's a famous architect. He doesn't let anyone know that he once rubbed elbows with powerful elites in New York City and was a master of his craft and knew more than most of the people on the job. He just kept his head down, did his work, and he let the pain of that experience break through another pain. He let the physical pain of his time in the quarry break the mental anguish that he was going through. The thing that he loved, he could no longer do temporarily, but he left all his troubles behind and he went to this quarry and he just suffered and he suffered alone. And he just thought, and he ruminated, and he brooded for months. And he just plotted his next move. It's a brilliant book. It's long. If you want to, you can look up this part. But I think without context, it will be a little difficult for you to really get into it. So I recommend reading the entire book. But the quarry is an excellent example of where we go when we need to find ourselves, define, oursel define ourselves, and ultimately crush ourselves into this new character. And when he comes out of the quarry, he's a new man. So for some people, this works. This sort of hardship is the path towards overcoming mental health issues. And I've certainly been no stranger to forgetting about my troubles through getting my hands dirty. I worked on a labor crew once for two seasons and we built these huge tents for outdoor weddings and outdoor events and we didn't have a lot of tools so everything we had to do was pretty much by hand. I remember we had one, we had one tool that really helped although helped is very relative. So when you put up a tent, it has to be staked into the ground, aggressively staked. It has to withstand extremely high winds. Basically, when you put in a tent for a wedding that's gonna fit 200, 300 people inside of it, that tent has to be ready to withstand hurricane wind forces. So if you set up a 300 person tent, you're gonna put hundreds of stakes in the ground. And those stakes are about a, three feet tall 
and they have to be sledgehammered in. And it's grueling work. But I remember when they told me on the job, oh, well, we've got a tool for that. A, uh, a sledge, uh, a sledge machine, I guess you would call it. I forget what we called it on the job, but it was meant to be the sort of jackhammer which pushed the stakes in. Except this thing weighed about 70 or 80 pounds. So when you take that 70 or 80 pound jackhammer and you lift it up, it's got to lift up about three feet to be on top of that stake to get started. It's like you're holding a small woman who's shaking violently and you're trying to fit it on this little stake head and your shoulders are just burning, your stomach's burning. You have to wear earplugs or else you'll blow your eardrums out. It's 90 degrees, 100 degrees. And you put the stakes in one by one. And there were many days I just said, screw it. I'd rather just use the hammer. I'd rather use the 10 pound sledgehammer. Wild and free, baby. But it was grueling and I found, I found a new level of myself. And I got through some hardship during that time. And I think of Teddy Roosevelt when he went to the Badlands. His wife and his mother died in the same day. And he was crushed, ultimately devastatingly crushed. And he was a young man. And when you think about all the things he went through and what he became, to think that he was crushed by something is surprising. But he was. And he really found himself when he went to the Badlands in the Dakotas. And he put himself to the test physically. And so I admire these kind of characters living life like an adventure, like it's a crucible. I love, I love things like that. I'm, I'm obsessed with movies about crucibles and the hero's journey. There's so many examples of, of movies like that. I grew up on movies like that. The 80s and 90s were full of Sigma males on the hero's journey. When I think of Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jean-Claude Jean -Claude Van Damme. They're all Sigma males in the movies they play. So this all sounds great and admirable and we want to be like these characters, but is it possible? And I think of the objection that you have, or you might have, about living a life of adventure. I'm introverted. I can't live a life of adventure. But when I think of this place in my city, I mean, look at this adventure. Look at what I'm experiencing. And I, I can be as introverted as I want. I don't have to talk to anyone if I don't want to. I'm experiencing firsthand poverty that most first world countries will never see. People living in a wild way, something that people just can't conceptualize unless they've seen it firsthand. So if you think your introversion will prevent you from being adventurous, I want to share something with you. So about five months ago, I had the choice to come to Thailand for a marketing conference. And there were a lot of hurdles to get there, one of which was impending coronavirus. And I almost didn't go, but I did. And I conquered my fear, and I met some incredible people. And I met a guy named Matt. And Matt has a website called The Copywriter's Crucible. 
and he actually wrote a blog about how to live a wildlife as an introvert. And it's about a copywriter named John Carlton. And this is what John Carlton had to say about basically being an introvert, more or less. He said, live a wildlife, put the book down, and put yourself outside your comfort zone every day. Take a dog for a walk and talk to other dog owners. Go to a bar and drink Virgin Marys and talk and listen to people. Go to bowling alleys, go to stores, interact with people, get into relationships and explore those relationships. And Matt continues with, so there you go. Living a wildlife is what drew Hemingway to reporting on the Spanish Civil War. Sure, impressing a lady was part of the equation, but he knew seeing people in extreme situations would make him a more intuitive writer. And when I read this in Matt's blog about being intuitive, it really reminded me of the Sigma male trait, this intuition that we have, a sort of sixth sense. And I think maybe some of you might be thinking, mm, I don't know if I have that, but I think it's a skill that many of us have just lost. It's kind of like a natural instinct and we've lost it. And I think it's a really powerful tool for Sigma males because intuitiveness is, is, a, is a great skill to have, to be able to trust your gut, to be able to have that gut instinct connected to the gut instinct. A lot of people have the gut instinct, of course, but we disconnect with it through our minds. Our minds get in the way of our intuition. And sometimes a man of legend is really less about his outward accomplishments. So maybe you don't have a long list of things that you've done, adventures you've been on. But what you do have is an energy, a mystery, big dick energy, whatever you want to call it. Big Sigma energy. And I think that that is one of the most legendary things someone can have. Is that energy, that vibe, that aura that mystery and I think you get that through adventure but first you have to decide that you're going to be that character you're going to have that energy and that's the first step of, of becoming that character is deciding you're going to be that and I think energy can go a long way subcommunication vibe all that stuff to me that's one of the sigma superpowers it's a secret superpower for us and there's a sort of nonchalance devil may care pseudo arrogance to our vibe and when you've really mastered that you can bring it back into the center a little bit and it's very interesting for people very intriguing and if it's not in, in the center, I, I think of this quote from Tanner Guzzi. He writes about masculine fashion, basically. And he talks about this idea of a rake. And now the rake, the way he describes the rake, it really reminded me of what a Sigma male looks like if they become out of balance, if they become a little too detached from reality and stop caring about people when they lose their empathy. So I'm going to read some little snippets of his description of what a rake is. And I, I think there are some lines in here that just made me stop and think, wow, that is so cool, so interesting, so fascinating, something I aspire to be like in some ways, maybe not in all ways, but some ways. And certainly a, a certain character that character traits that you might gain something from. And so when you think of outward accomplishments, like I just mentioned before, 
it's easy to think, eh, that's not for me. And that's very Sigma male of us, to, to look at outward accomplishments and think, yeah, but I'm not trying to show off. Because we've stepped beyond that, or we're in the process of stepping beyond that. And I think ultimately, we all come back to a, a place of balance. We all come full circle. And our journey as Sigma males is to go from being plugged in to being totally unplugged, but then going back to the willingly plugged in. So you can do things like have a great job if you want, if you really want it. And it's for you, it's not for other people. Maybe you want to become a lawyer, but it's for you now. It's not to impress other people. Maybe you want the Ferrari, but you want the 1987 version because it's for you, it's for your experience. So let's talk about the rake. And though I just want to preface with, this is the definition of Tanner Guzzi's rake. Not everything is about the Sigma male. So here it goes, the rake. He has no concern for money, nature, or other men, unless they hamper or improve his ability to travel where he wants, bed whom he wants, or experience what he wants. He is not competitive with other men directly, so much as he is competitive with the indirect ideals of masculinity and how he personally gauges his success. Now I thought that was really good. That was really interesting to think about Sigma males like that too. He is in competition with the indirect ideals of masculinity and how he personally gauges his success. That's a phenomenal filter to view the world as a Sigma male. Tanner Guzzi continues, A rake can be a starving artist, a rock star, a freelance writer, a construction worker, a trust fund baby, or even unemployed. His status and influence doesn't come from his influence on other men, but his influence on other women. He is the man who has taken the time to learn what makes women tick, and how to use that to his or her, to how to use that to his and her mutual benefit most of the time. So again, not trying to have status, not trying to be influential, because you focus on small relationships, small circles. You're doing what you want to do and it's not harming other people. But some people might have trouble with it because they might see, well, you're not helping. You're not helping a bunch of people in the traditional way. So you must be hurting other people. Now, many people might get benefit from what I'm talking about here. Many people might really think that I'm providing a lot of value through Sigma Spirit. But there are certainly people who will think I am tearing society apart, doing something immoral, something unethical. So it's really all about perspective. And Tanner continues with something a little shocking and kind of interesting to watch how popular Sigma males are becoming compared to two years ago. And when you think of this quote that he's about to drop, it's, it's a little scary. As Western society continues to decay, as movement in any direction is heralded as progress, as the bonds that created civilization continue to be hacked at, more and more men will embrace the selfishness and nihilism of the rake and find themselves sitting poolside while the rest of the world reverts to chaos. Sadly, as men and masculinity are more and more maligned in media, schools, and work environments, the number of men who will forego the rugged and refined archetypes in favor of the relative ease and freedom of the rake will continue to increase. So, 
the rugged and the refined archetypes were the other two archetypes in Tanner Guzzi's masculine fashion sort of philosophy. And the rugged one is very hyper-masculine. The refined is more like a debonair masculine. And it's funny to read this and think about men embracing the selfishness and nihilism of the rake. And I find that that's a part of the Sigma male journey too, to come face to face with that. And we all have a choice. No one will condemn you if you sit poolside while the rest of the world eats itself alive. That's your choice ultimately. The philosophy of Sigma spirit is a little more empathetic than that, but I won't judge you. And I don't think it's right for anyone else to judge you. And when he talks about men and masculinity becoming more and more maligned, so maligned that people will just walk away from it. And I think certainly that's what many Sigma males do right now. Not all of them, not most of them, but many do. They don't understand masculinity. So they've flocked to this Sigma male family where they can have a new definition of masculinity. Except no one really knows what it means. And that's really one of the goals of, of this channel, is to define a new way of looking at masculinity. Because with this new masculinity, you can create this character. And we can take that masculinity and help others build a character around it. They don't have to be confused anymore. Imagine if people grew up nowadays and they didn't feel confusion, especially men. What a world that would be. So I think this work we're doing right here, building these characters within us, showing those characters to other people, living by example, setting examples for others to follow, not just someone you saw in a movie, not some guy you read about in a history book, but you, you right there, you're impacting someone. Some 10 year old kid watches the way you swag through some mall or something. He sees the way you carry yourself. Maybe you do something of high integrity. He sees you pick up that piece of trash and throw it away. Wow, that's a man right there. That's a man to admire. And I think as society does crumble, we're going to see a lot of fake sigmas. People who think they're sigmas, but they're really just jokers. They want to just crush the system. They don't care about other people. They just would sooner see it burn. And that brings me to the next point that he talks about. In a thriving civilization, the number of rakes who can fully embrace this archetype are few and far between. However, they thrive and multiply when societies start the slow march to ruin. Therefore, a good indicator of the health of a given society is the degree of allowance, tolerance, or adoration given to the rakes. Man, if you read that and you don't think about Sigma males, I don't know what filter you're seeing in the world right now. And I think we're watching that right now. We're seeing men want to be understanding that they are, realizing who they are as Sigma males. And it's happening all right now. And it's not happening because I started a YouTube channel. It's because the world is pushing you towards that. And that's okay. So I think in many of these quotes that Tanner Guzzi says, you can pretty much swap out rakes with sigmas. He continues, this is not to say that rakes are inherently bad or evil. They are simply men who can only thrive under a certain set of circumstances. And even if a man is not a full on rake, we would do well to embrace a bit of the social disregard and irreverence they epitomize. So, I think that's a powerful lesson for you if you're wondering 
Does the world need me? Because it does. Don't confuse your certain set of circumstances with being a negative. Society would do well to learn a bit of independence, to learn a bit of mystery, to learn a bit of intuitiveness, intelligence, depth, empathy. And that's why we're here. And the last part. Many people will not take you seriously. As a result, the normal script of going to college, getting a job, getting married, and starting a family won't work for you which is fine for most men who aspire to be rakes anyway. You will have to get creative when it comes to making money or establishing any semblance or permanency in the world. Like the other two archetypes, there needs to be consistency between your attitude, your self-perception, and the way you dress. If you really do want to settle down with a wife and kids, embracing too much rake will hurt your ability to do so. Now, here's my favorite quote. If you can't walk into a room and command it with complete disregard for the comfort of others, you will be a disingenuous... Now, this is my favorite quote of the article. If you can't walk into a room and command it with complete disregard for the comfort of others, you will be a disingenuous mannequin, not a rake who can back up the social risks he takes by wearing such attention-getting clothing. So keep in mind that the rake is defined by the clothes he wears, so we're really not talking about a signal. This is just someone who takes risks with his fashion, dresses a little wild. So, people won't take you seriously. You'll have to get creative when it comes to making money. There needs to be consistency with your attitude, your perception, and who you are. And you have to believe it. And in this last part, I don't know if he's talking about a rake or he's talking about a sigma male. Because it just seems so spot on, doesn't it? And that's, that's why I had to share that with you. It's very interesting. If you can't walk into a room and command it with complete disregard for the comfort of others you will be a disingenuous mannequin. That's powerful right there. So, we've learned about all kinds of characters today. We've learned about going too far and creating a character, what that can do for you, how it can give you troubles and problems if you're not aligned, congruent. But what can you do? What can you do for yourself? How do you create your own character? Well, I think that that is the most fulfilling part because no one tells you how to do it. No one tells you what you have to be, who you have to be. And as soon as you start looking for ways after this podcast, this audio series, you start thinking, yeah, but what are the ways, Alex? What are the 10 funky tips? then you've already lost. You've already started creating a disingenuous mannequin of a character. So this part's on you now. This part is entirely on you. And that's liberating. Because you are more than capable of creating this character. One day it'll just be an idea. It'll be a little bit of this guy, a little bit of that guy. A little bit of this guy that you met when you were 12, you remember, and a little bit of that actor. And then suddenly it comes together and it starts to become you. Maybe you give it a name. Maybe you switch jobs. Maybe you go all in. Maybe you start a YouTube channel, start calling yourself Sigma Spirit. And the reason why I can say this with such confidence that you'll get it, you'll understand it, It'll come to you, because it came to me. Sigma Spirit is my character. That's not his name, but I'll tell you in time who the character is. I'll tell you more of the story, the, the goal. 
my my dreams with this character but I'll st- I'll start with the beginning I was in a place where I've been a dreamer my whole life and then about a year ago I understood it was time to create this character stop dreaming start living it and so I just decided let's do this I'm gonna be this character And within a few years, I hope to be living adventures. I want to use this channel as a way to teach you all all about being Sigma males, introverts, empaths, whatever it is, men, some women, I'm sure. And then I want to start going on adventures. I want to start doing hard, difficult things to see what I'm made of, see what I can accomplish, see the ends of my own humanity. And that's really my goal with the character and and on a macro, very vague level. And I'll tell you more about it in the future. And I hope I'll, I'll write books about it and provide a manual for men who want to be men of Sigma spirit and just leave that manual, that legacy behind that legendary character remember that guy Alex yeah, yeah, that Sigma spirit channel yeah yeah, he died, but man, have you read his books? have you listened to his channel? he just tells you how to live as a Sigma spirit as a Sigma male as XYZ He just left us the manual. Such a legend. And when they say that, such a legend, I hope that they're talking about themselves. I hope what they really say is, I'm such a legend for what he taught me. And I hope you feel that way as well. So I want you to take a second and think about just how legendary you are, just how legendary you could be, just how legendary you've been, what a character you've been in the past. There's no one more interesting than you in your life. Remember that. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe if you got all the way through this and you're not subscribed. What are you waiting for? This is as, as dedicated as it gets. I mean, I'm glad you stuck around this whole time. Give it a like. I want this stuff to circulate, you know, if you really felt value in this stuff. We don't want garbage to circulate. And right now, if you watch a video that you really admire, you like, you learn something from, and you don't like it or share it, it just kind of dies. But it's not a it's not a zero sum. It dies at the expense of some other terrible content being circulated. So just remember that. Just remember that. Let's let's spread the good stuff. Enjoy, my friend. I will speak to you soon.